Owner Frank Panier put this facade on the Dewdrop Inn in 1968, at the end of its run as New Orleans' premier black nightclub. It was there for the next 53 years, including after Hurricane Katrina, when Panier's family struggled to renovate the building. Then, a new owner turned to Gabriel Bege, who found it could qualify for historic tax credits if it still had features from its heyday. You know, in order to even have a chance at utilizing these tax credits, we needed to investigate what was still underneath that modern facade. And so, we did, we did that one morning. Uh, we just went for it, was and it was nerve-wracking, and we started peeling back the layers, and... Sure enough, it was all there, or most of it was there, and you could clearly recognize the dewdrop as it was uh, right there in front of us. And we had people stopping, uh, stopping on the street and looking at it and telling us their stories of their memories of the dewdrop, and it was just like, ah, it had come back to life all of a sudden. So here on this uh, concrete sign band, we can see a remnant of a painted letter D for dewdrop in white and red on a yellow background. There are a few areas on the facade where we can see just a touch of the historic lettering, which we thought was really exciting. And then it qualified for the financing that allowed that. And because of that, we were able to say, hey, look, the dewdrop is still here. And they and, and the, the agencies concurred with us. They said, yes, we see it. And so then we started the, the process. And that's what made this renovation possible. So we're checking out the progress on the renovation of the dewdrop in. And as you can see, if you look through the center here, you can see that there's actually two structures. They were joined together in 1945. On the right side, on the first floor, that was the nightclub. And on the left side, that was primarily the hotel. So this was one of the original doorways to the nightclub. What's happening now is this red scaffolding is being used to hold up the roof. And while the roof is being held up like that, the crew is coming in and they're rebuilding these walls. So these windows facing LaSalle Street were part of a renovation that Frank Panier did early on. And those glass bricks are original. Uh, it was part of the modern look of this place back in the day that was lights reflecting off of them and was part of the sort of glamour of the place from the street as you would walk in. This huge hole right here is because they're having to put in all new plumbing. Uh, so they're basically having to take up the entire slab and install new pipes and everything. And then they're gonna do a new slab on top of that. The stage moved several times. Uh, the configuration of the space changed several times. And so it was really kind of constantly from the 40s through the 60s uh, being renovated and tweaked and expanded. So there wasn't just one way that the dewdrop was to be recreated. Um, you know, it was a fluid thing. So um, one way that you can identify that, actually, watch your step down here. Um, one indication of the changes and how they played out during the life of the, of the dewdrop you can see is in these bullseyes that are painted on the back wall back here. The Panier family said that whenever Frank remodeled, he put a bullseye where he moved the stage. When the new owner found these, he decided to keep them. Yeah, let's go upstairs. So you can see this was the exterior weatherboarding of one of the two structures that Panier joined together to make the whole complex. Um, this building was originally on the ground floor and what he did was he, he jacked it up and he put the nightclub in the empty space underneath. So this structure would have originally been on LaSalle Street at ground level. The dewdrop was listed in the Green Book, a national directory of businesses that black travelers could safely go to during segregation. Hotel guests checked in at this counter, which was next to a full-service barbershop. These were the original chairs where artists got their hair done before taking the stage. To get from the barbershop up to their hotel room, though, even stars had to climb this narrow staircase. 
The rooms were small, crowded onto a central hallway, and most didn't even have their own bathroom. Under segregation, black business owners like Frank Panier had to accommodate as many guests as possible with limited space and resources. The Dewdrops neighborhood was redlined, a practice used to deny loans and insurance to black property owners. Despite that, Panier expanded and renovated the Dewdrop to make it the swankiest nightclub in the South. While public policy made it harder for him, the current developer, Curtis Doucette, is tapping not just historic tax credits, but other public funds to rebuild the facility. Frank had mortgages. He had a $7,500 mortgage on this building and an $8,500 mortgage on that building. But I would be willing to bet you that they weren't the most favorable rates um, because of, of redlining. Loans like that, uh, great loans, weren't available to people like uh, Frank Panier at that time. Uh, the difference now is, and, and I'm not saying that there isn't discrimination in lending, there very much still is. But part of what drew these public funds to this project is that I am African American, that I'm a minority, and that this is in an impoverished neighborhood, which not at all coincidentally is um, also happens to be a former red line neighborhood, right? So, um, so I, I'm, I'm fortunate in that some of those things that have played against us in the past have played to our benefit as we move this project forward.